Okay, so welcome back again, and guys, to uh, system administration. Okay. Okay. So it hiccuped on me. The network hiccuped on me. Maybe the, the rain or something is doing some bad stuff. Uh, so uh, there's a uh, there's an, uh, something posted in the graduate student channel for this course. So if you're a graduate student, make sure you check that out uh, and get on that. So uh, for the rest of you guys, it's it's just normal day today for us. Uh, one thing uh, we will cover networking today and how to do networking. Uh, and then this is not a networking course, so we're not going to go into like really detailed stuff about networking, but do want to have you understand as a system administrator how we can set it up uh, and control networking aspects of our system. Um, let's see. And then one thing is the last thing we'll do today. So that's actually a shorter chapter. Well, it's not a short chapter, but it's a, it's a short day as far as lecture is concerned. Uh, but what we'll do is at the end of the time today is we will talk about next week's exam and what you can expect uh, and, and kind of what I'm planning to do for that. All right. All right. Well, let's get to it then. Let me go ahead and pull up the this guy here. Okay. All right. So we finished off. I went back and looked, and actually, I think we finished off the logs uh, stuff last week. So. Uh, we uh, we talked about the maintaining accurate time, and that was the last section of the logs section. So even though uh, in the syllabus today we're supposed to continue with logs and move into uh, logs and, net and networking today, we're actually a little bit of ahead of the game, I guess. But uh, that, that hopefully will mean that this class will be shorter and you guys can uh, um, get out a little bit earlier and get prepared to, to, to go out go outside before the weekend um, so all right so we just want to talk a little bit about a brief overview of networking concepts so some of the different layers for our network model uh, the, some of the layers that we've talked about the application layer the transport layer what the internet layer and and the link layer so for how uh, things can connect from one device to another somewhere else in the world. Okay, and there's all these different uh, you know, services and layers that are associated with that. Now, one thing that you guys probably uh, have some familiarity with, and, and maybe if, especially if you've taken a networking class here, uh, then you probably definitely have some familiarity with, is the idea of a, what the IP address is. So each, each machine, each device, has an IP address. It's the, the way that it can communicate with the network and how that then that network can communicate <clears throat> uh, across to other uh, to other networks as well. OK, so. The IP address in, in the old format that in the, in the, in the uh, IPv4, right, that had a four uh, four number code, no four number address each separated by a dot right? and each one of these represented an 8-bit number so this was an 8-bit number this was an 8-bit number for some reason it's not allowing me to highlight things today so that's, that's great uh, so this was a four uh, an 8-bit number as you can see here this is an 8-bit this is an 8 and so forth All right and then how many of those bits represented the network portion of the address uh, would be this kind of the slash and then a follow-up number here so the full ip address here would be you know 172.17.5.3 slash 16. okay uh, okay down here a different address you know 192.168.5.3 slash 24. So what that means is that the first <clears throat> the first 24 bits or in case in this situation I mean, we could look at it as the first 
three numbers, first three decimal numbers here, represent the network portion of the address. The last portion represents that particular device. Okay, so the more bits, the more bits that we uh, apply to the network portion of the address, then that means that we can have more individual network. But that also means that there's fewer bits applied to the device level, which means that we can have fewer devices on that network. So that's the trade off here. Right, is that if we if we say okay, we'll make the prefix bigger, you know, so that we can have more uh, networks. Basically, what it is, is the bigger prefix means lots of smaller networks. Uh, a smaller prefix means fewer larger networks. Okay. So the way that we could uh, read this is that uh, uh, so the network address would be just this portion. This this. Uh, um, the 255.255.255 and then the, the the zero just means that's a net mask that's applied to, to determine where the network is. All right. So, all right, let's, um, let me show you an example. Let me show you, so uh, I'll show you on a Windows com computer here uh, how you could look up what the, what the IP address of like my computer here is. So if I pull up a command prompt, OK, so the command on a, on a Windows machine is IP config. We will talk about uh, what <clears throat> what the command is. It's on the next page, I think. Uh, on the next page of the document. So what we understand from this is that this is a 24 bit network address. Um, I'm, I'm, I may need to move to a different portion of um, a different place. Seems like the network quality is bad on the Wi-Fi here, but we'll see. OK, so this would be 191.56.1 slash 20. OK, would be another way that we could word this right here. So that's kind of that's what that slash 24 tells us is that the subnet would then be 255. So the way that <clears throat> the way that you determine what you know what the network is, it would do an AND operation with all the bits of your IP address with so that mask, and then that's how they can figure out what that is. Okay. Okay. So then the default gateway, the gateway. We'll talk about that here. Is in this information as well. Ends up being the network address. And the uh, um, and, and the end is usually what your, your gateway is. All right, so uh, we could look it up on a Windows machine. Like I said, we'll show you a moment uh, the command. Uh, let me see if I can switch over to a different network. This is what I can't get to a different network here. So move to a different. All right. Okay. So again. All right. these forms whether you say slash or you say put the mask as being however many dot zero you know the number of ones followed by the number of zeros right 
both say the same. Okay. Now there is uh, there is what we'll call a broadcast address. We'll talk about that in a, I think it's on the next page, right? Where basically what could happen is we could send information to every device on the network. It would send it across to all IP addresses on the network. So look at it like this. So the host address is there. Okay. This is an example of a host address. Our network prefix or our you know, network mask you know, would be uh, our, our subnet mask would be this uh, 255.255.255.0. Okay. Then that means that the network address would be this just the first three numbers here. And our broadcast address would be those same first three numbers, but with 255 on the end because it would be all ones from then on. All right. So here, another example. Well, what if it was an address with slash eight? Well, that means that only that first number is uh, only that first full decimal number. Hmm. Is anyone else having a problem that they can't see the screen? Okay. All right. So where was I? Okay. So it's only, and it's not the, the first number. I shouldn't say the first number. What I should say is the first eight bits are the network prefix or ones for the network prefix. Which means the network address becomes this. Now, notice again what I said was that means that the for this network, all of these bits can be reserved for devices. On can be reserved for connections. That's a lot of, but it also means that only these bits are reserved for the network itself which means there's a lot fewer possibilities of networks. OK. And again, the broadcast address, we would just take everything from the network address portion on and make them ones instead. So the network address becomes this, the broadcast address becomes this. Okay. And one more example for fun. What if the number of bits representing the network wasn't divisible by eight, wasn't a byte level number of, uh, wasn't a byte level uh, number of bits? Well, okay, so we have this address, which means only the, these numbers, so then only these bits, these first 19 bits would be part of the network which means this third number becomes not 255, but something else, 224. Then the network address becomes, becomes this, right? becomes just this portion, followed by zeros. And the broadcast address becomes this portion, sorry, this portion, followed by ones. Okay. One final note here, uh, the special address uh, 127.0.0.1 is always the local host. So if I would say, you know, I don't, you can't see this, so I can't show it to you. Um, so it's always the local host. It's always the, 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 uh, um, the machine you're currently on. So if I were to, uh, so actually let, let me go ahead and show you what I'm, what I'm talking about here. Yeah, it is ping is the way that we can uh, contact something. So if I were to say ping one, well, let me ping myself. Let me ping uh, my 
address on the the Wi-Fi address here. 192.168.11.181. Okay. So notice here. Okay. So by 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 default uh, in a Windows machine, we we ping four times. It's it basically what a ping is. Is for those of you who haven't taken a networking course or anything like this, it sends a message out to the to the address and it says, "Hey, are you there?" And then and then the um, response is, "Yeah, I'm here." And basically, how fast that happens, uh, how fast that happens tells you, um, you know, basically tells you how fast it was able to receive a response from that other server. And so in this situation, I pinged myself. So I, I said to my own computer, hey, are you there? Can I talk to you? Uh, hopefully the computer says yes, right? Hopefully I say yes. So what if I ping my default gateway? Okay. Now notice it takes a little bit more time because it's not this current machine. It's not the one that I'm currently on. You can also ping things that are not IP addresses, like I could ping uh, Google. Okay. So you can ping now. Notice that when I do that, I'm told what IP address belongs to Google. Right now, that is not <clears throat> that is not like Google's only IP address. Right, that's not the only way to get to Google, but it's probably the closest one to where I'm currently, where I am. Um, let's see another one. If you want to ping, um, what's another another one? Oh, we could ping cse.octanews.edu. Is it edu.tr? Just edu. nope, couldn't find those. Okay, let's see. Dot tr. Okay, so um, oh, this is not good. Oh, that shouldn't happen. Mm, okay, well, it looks like uh, Octan <laughs> our <laughs> our department website. Either is too far away or uh, something is not quite right now. Anyway, okay. The reason why I wanted, to, the reason I even brought this up in the first place was I wanted to say, okay, ping 127.0.0.1. So this is always your whole, your computer that you're on. This is always the device that you're on. Okay. So it should come back very quickly. Right. And so as you see, um, It's about the same here, less than one millisecond, same as when I pinged my home, my my personal address. Okay, and that's because these are the same places. Okay. So, all right, so that's that's ping, and that's uh, I believe that's the same on uh, that's the same on Windows and uh, Linux as well. Okay. Ah, uh, so <clears throat> so if we look at the individual devices here, okay, an individual device has an address, and let's say that this is slash twenty four. So the network portion of the address is this one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot five. Okay, now that is the local address. So when that when that device tries to talk to somebody else on the network, it can connect you know through this network portion of the address and an individual portion of the address. Now that um, that gateway is then going to <clears throat> translate that address into something else that the internet will see. So this is like a local address for like on this network. Uh, what does it understand itself to be? All right, and then there will be this gateway that uh, will be able to route traffic you know, through a server to be able to get out to the internet. Okay. All right. This allows us to have more local addresses that make sense to us inside of our network uh, without having to um, without having to um, require that those outside of our network know our own internal addresses. So 
the routing table will tell us how to route traffic for particular networks and how to get things, get information and data packets from one place to another. Okay. So, uh, the routing table of a, a destination network, so to send the traffic out and IP address of the intermediate router to relay the message to wherever it's supposed to go. Uh, let's see what other key things do I want to bring up. Oh, we can ha we have a name for that interface for that. So that'll be the device <clears throat> that we can give um, uh, a name to and a uh, an address to. And we'll and we'll down some groundwork here uh, to be able to tell you how to configure that network to be able to give these devices their names and, and addresses for the purposes of uh, having them work to route data and packets for the, uh, from places to places. Okay. All right. Now, generally, and what we'll see in, uh, some examples here are that the network interfaces are generally this you know, Ethernet 0, Ethernet 1, uh, but that's not um, that's not a requirement. Right? That is just uh, that is just the tra the tradition. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Ethernet interfaces generally begin with EN. Uh, wide uh, local area networks WL and wide area networks with WW. So the type of adapter for O for onboard, uh, S for slot, P for PCI, uh, and then finally, what is the ID? So this is basically so you can have multiple adapters, multiple interfaces that you can have, um, and they can each have their own separate names. Okay. All right. And again, if and they say if the fixed name cannot be determined, so it'll have multiple names. Uh, the traditional name e, ETH0, ETH1 will be used instead. All right. So, all right. so go ahead and take a look at the quiz. I posted these. Um, I posted these on the classroom materials folder this morning. So hopefully you've gotten them by now. So hopefully you've gotten access to them by now. Definitely take a look at these quizzes uh, because these make for pretty easy exam questions for next week. And um, so uh, I won't give like this exact answer, this exact question, but I'll give you a question like an IP address with a gateway, and then it will uh, tell you that. And you'll have to tell me, okay, is this feasible? Is this not feasible? So as an example, I'll say like for this right here. Um, let's see, let me find one. Like this one, for example, this is not possible because the gateway is not on the same subnet. So see this, match this, it's not on the same subnet because it should be the first 20 fourths, which would be the first three decimal numbers, right? Okay, so on the quizzes again, and if you have questions, if you don't, um, if you're not quite clear about why the answers are or what they are, um, so the solutions should be given as well uh, in those. So just let me know. And again, this for uh, especially in the current situation, I think these would make for uh, definite the types of exam questions I would I would give. All right. So we know how to uh, understand what an IP address is and how some of these devices uh, are set up. What about what are we validating? We need to make sure that the current network configuration uh, works, is valid, 
uh, work uh, will operate as expected for routing traffic for getting data packets from places to places uh, where they need to go. All right. So we can use the IP command to show the address of a particular device. So if we wanted to say, you know, IP address show for, you know, ETH zero, the ETH zero device. What it will tell us is, you know, what is the IP address? All right. And you should know that this would then be the broadcast address. All right. So if we go through some of what these uh, what these informations are, so the number one here, you know, up means that it is it is active right now. It is up and running. Two it says what the MAC address of the device is. Now the the MAC address is uh, uh, more of a specific device address. Okay. The INET shows the IPv4, the, the IP address, and what the prefix is. The broadcast address, right? And the INET 6 shows the IPv6 information, so the IPv, uh, IP version 6. Okay. Generally, we, uh, we, we think more in terms of this IPv4 in terms of what we're looking for and what we see, what we understand. Okay. We can also see what type of network performance we're having. Right? So we're showing what type of, uh, you know, how many packets, how many bytes, <clears throat> how many received bytes and packets, how many transmitted bytes and packets. So what uh, is the network having any errors or dropped packets or, or you know, um, problems? In, in getting information routed to where it needs to go. Okay. Now, if we use the IP command to route, we can show what path things are taking uh, to get from one place to another. Right. So all packets that need to go to this 10.0.0.0 network will be sent through this device, through the device E1. <clears throat> okay. All packets that need to go to this other network will be sent through E0 or F0. Right. And all other packets uh, will be sent to the default router. Actually, I think um, yeah. I'm going to do a typo in there. Anyway, all right. So through this, all right. If we're sending it to anything that's 172.25. something, then it'll go through this. So we can see how data is being routed. And this goes back to that when we talked about that on the networking concept section about how the uh, the gateway and the DNS server and all that, how that's all connected. Because remember that those have their own addresses as well that, that the outer world can see to get information uh, into where it's trying to get to. Okay. Showed you this on the command prompt for Windows, the ping command. Uh, 
uh, a 32 bit packet, 32 bytes rather, packet <clears throat> four times and getting four responses. So, and however, in Red Hat and CentOS, when we send a ping, it will keep going until we press Control C. It's a continual operation. Okay, but we can limit using the uh, the, the C option how many times they will send it. So we, this would probably be pretty good uh, to to use that to not just continually over and over again send packets and keep pinging things over and over again. Now, we can also trace the path from one place to another to be able to figure out how uh, we got from one one to uh, um, from one place to like I said, from one place to another, from our local computer out to somewhere else. Okay, and each line, so each line that we get here, and I'll look at an example of this. Uh, uh, when we get on the when we get on the virtual machine together here in a moment, each line in the trace path represents some connection that was made as passing. So basically, when you go to Google or you go to some other website, you're not just going directly from your computer to them. You're going through a router. You're going through a server. So you're making multiple jumps. You're making multiple uh, switches from your computer to another device, to another device, to another device, and then that path is coming back. So when you send out information to Google, to whatever website, you're saying, I want to get information from there. I'm wanting to send, I'm wanting to establish a connection with that other device out there, with that other network. And what's happening is, is that the, the, the information goes out and it kind of establishes the path of how it's going to get there. And then when information comes back, it comes back along the same path. Okay. And so we keep track of how we can get from point A to point B. All right. So sometimes there may be uh, some problems. So we can troubleshoot the things. So if we uh, if we want to look at socket statistics, SS can do that. All right. um, kind of running out of time in this section, so so I, I want to get to the next one. The configuring. I need to finish the third section before the end of this section before this time period's up. All right. We'll look at that example here. Um, when, like I said, when we get to the uh, virtual machine. Okay. Now, the we will use this uh, this command nmcli uh, for configuring our networks. Okay. This is the what I want to kind of focus on here for this this first hour that we're together is. So if we show the active, uh, sorry, if we show a, a list of all connections right, that we have, then you know, we can use that NMCLI connection con show. And if we only want to see active ones, we can use a, a command line parameter for that. And what this will do is it'll show us all the connections uh, that we currently have established um, on this device. All right. If we want to specifically show information about a connection, we want to show details. We don't want to just see what the connection is. We want to see some real details. So what we can do is we can put the name of that connection. So here, this static ETH0. Right. And then it's going to give us a lot more information here. Okay, what is the DNS? Uh, the domain name. Okay. What is, you know, what are other addresses? Okay. So these are all things that we can have 
show up based on that particular connection ID. We can also see what the device statuses are. So again, ETH0 is an Ethernet type. It's connected. WLP3S0 is a Wi-Fi and connected. If we say, OK, show me the device ETH0, right? this is the same. This is that. Um, uh, that particular device. So we can use that, that NMCLI, to not only show information about a device, show their status and information, we can also use that same command to establish network connections. Okay. So if we wanted to create a new connection named default, to auto connect as an ether connection on our e ethernet zero device using dhcp so dhcp is kind of a, is a is a, a default thing right so the dhcp is a dynamic um, i can't remember the rest of what that stands for but it's basically the obtains ip addresses uh, dynamically all right so here Instead of con show, now we're con adding. We are adding a new connection. We can name it something particular. Okay, we can name it any. And so type keeping that IF name is what device it is. Now we can also specify the IP address and the gateway. So DHCP just says, go get your own IP address. You know, go get your own IP address however you need to get it. If we specify the IP address, then we are saying we want to tell you what your IP address will be and what your gateway will be. All right. We can also tell it to not auto connect, that we will, we will manually connect to this device so to this connection All right. so here we're adding again we're giving it a name we're telling it what device we're telling it don't auto connect it's an ethernet connection and we're telling it what ip address and gateway to use okay all right so when we boot up the, uh, our system, it will auto connect to whatever our DHCP connection is. So we can change to the static connection. So when we con up, when we connection up the static connection, we use the name from here, it, it connects to the static connection. So it connects to uh, the connection that we created that's called static. And we can change back to the DHCP, DHCP connection by saying uh, this is basically, I'm sure that many of you guys have done this before, where if you have a multiple Wi-Fi possibilities, Wi-Fi networks, where you can change from one Wi-Fi device to another, one Wi-Fi network to another. Uh, you simply click on the um, the whatever it's called um, the thing with all the, the, the lines that the, the Wi-Fi icon I, I can't I don't know what to call that click on that you switch over to a different Wi-Fi you're not connected to both right it changes which one you're connected to so that's the same thing that's going on here is you're changing which connection you are connected to alright so it can only you can only have one up at a time. Right. So you can have to do a new connection. So if we wanted to add a new connection, we use the help at the end of our command to find out all this information. Um, all right. Okay. 
we can also take existing network uh, interfaces and change them. We can. We don't have to just uh, create new ones. We can uh, also change them. So let's say uh, for the static connection. Uh, the, auto connect should have been no for static. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, I thought we had set it up as no originally. Okay. Anyway, we can change a setting by modifying the static connection and saying uh, connection dot auto connect no. If it already is yes, we can change it to no. Can I cut? Uh, I think some other thing. Okay. Uh, we can specify which DNS server and that plus here tells me that uh, we want to be able to use two different domain name servers to be able to um, to be able to get out to the world. Okay. Uh, we can replace what the IP address and gateway is, so we can have. Uh, set the IPv4 address to be this other thing, this other address and gateway. Right. I think, what was it before? Static was, let's see, when we set it up. Hmm. Static is x up ten. Okay, looks like I'm back. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, okay, so we can replace, we can say and give it a new IP address on Gateway. <clears throat> and we can add a secondary IP address as well. So this would be two different IP addresses <clears throat> that the same connection could be used uh, and connected to. Okay, so basically a summary of all the different um, the main NMCLI commands we can use. Uh, we can list the devices, we can show connections, we can activate or deactivate a connection. Okay, uh, we can add a new connection, modify, we can delete a connection if we don't want it anymore, we want to remove it uh, from our list. Uh, and that's uh, that. So that concludes the first three sections of the networking concepts, and the plan will do the practice here. It's break time here to try to figure out what's going on with my own network connection, why uh, it seems to be causing having so many problems over here right now, and hopefully next the next hour will be better than what we've got going on now. All right. Uh, sorry again for uh, the craziness. I'm I'm I'm. Kind of thinking it may just be the rain. Uh, so, all right. So we'll take a break now. Uh, it's 10:20. We'll be back on at about 10:30, assuming that I can figure out what's going on with my network. All right.